So last week we learned a little bit about what graphs are. Now we're going to go in a little bit more detail about what uh, types of graphs we might use, special types of graphs, and then we'll end our lesson today with trees. So we're going to start by looking at some terminology that you need to understand, and this is specific to undirected graphs. We'll look at directed graphs in a few moments. And the first is adjacent vertices, also called neighbors. And this one's kind of a gimme. Adjacent vertices are vertices that are connected by an edge. So A and B would be adjacent or would be neighbors, but B and C would not because B and C are not directly connected by an edge. Incident would be what we would call an edge. So we would say, uh, let me just give this edge a name B. So I would say edge B is incident with vertices E and B. So incident just means it's the edge that, that is connecting two vertices. If we talk about the neighborhood, and you see on my next line, this is actually the notation that I would use for a neighborhood. A neighborhood is essentially just a set of all of the vertices, which of course would be a subset of the vertices of the graph, um, that are connected to a specific vertice. So if I wanted to know the neighborhood of, say, E, it would be the union of all of the vertices that belong to the set that are neighbors. So that would be A and B and C. So obviously um, D would not be included because D is not connected to E. That brings us to degree. The degree for an undirected graph is essentially the sum of the number of ins and outs. So the number of vertices connected to that particular vertice. So the number of edges connected to the vertice. So for A, Notice we'd have one, two, three, four. So the degree of A would be four. So even though that loop is just really a line connecting itself, we do have to count it twice. For B, we have one, two. So the degree of B equals two. If we're looking at E, the degree of E is three. And then for C, one, two, three, degree of C is three. And then for poor D down here, the degree, whoops, the degree of D is obviously zero. So it is a vertex, but it is not connected and therefore it has a degree of zero because there are zero edges coming out of it. We would call D isolated because obviously it's not connected to anything else. Um, the last one is a pendant, and unfortunately I didn't put that on your picture, but a pendant would be something um, that is essentially just connected uh, to one other edge. Let's say I had a square, and then I had a guy sticking out like this. And so the pendant would be this guy because he is out here by himself, and it is the vertex that is the pendant. So if this was point E, we'll just call these A, B, C, D. So E would be the pendant, because it is the vertex that is connected only once to another vertex. So that brings us to the handshaking theorem. And the handshaking theorem started really with a question like the one I've written in green. Suppose there are six people in a room and each must shake hands with every other person. How many handshakes happen? So you can say I've already drawn the graph out for you really just to save time. But let's take a look just the long way counting this. I would count this as one, two, three, four, five. And then when I start with B, I'm not going to connect it back to A because B and A have already shaken hands. So we have five, this is six, seven, eight, nine. This is 10, 11, 12. This is 13, 14, and this is 15. So we know the answer is 15. 
Now let's take a look at the handshake theorem, which helps us to do something like that without drawing the picture and without doing all of the counting. So we're looking at a graph, G equals V E, just as we had talked about before, where V is obviously the set of vertices and E is the set of edges. And then we're saying with M edges. So we're just going to use M to represent the number of edges. Then 2M is equal to the sum of all V's that belong to the set of vertices. So all of the vertices adding up their degrees. So the sum of all of the degrees. So let's check it with the one that we already know the answer to. If I look at A, A has a degree of 5. And if I look at B, that also has a degree of 5, and C has a degree of 5, and D has a degree of 5, and E has a degree of 5, and F has a degree of 5, because there are five lines, five edges coming out of that vertex. So I would say the sum of all of those degrees is 5 times 6, because there were 6 people. So that would be 30 equals 2M, M being the number of edges, divide each side by 2, and I get M equals 15. So obviously it's a very, it's a lot easier way to do it. There is a proof of that in your textbook if you'd like to take a look at it. The types of questions you might get for the handshaking theorem would look like how many edges are there if you have 10 vertices, each of degree 6. So again, I'm looking at this formula right here and I'm saying 2m, I'm solving for m, equals, I'm trying to find the sum of the degrees and so if there are 10 vertices, each of degree 6, that would be 6 times 10 or 60, which means there must be 30 edges. So now let's look specific to directed graphs and some of the terminology that is similar but just a little bit different. So for directed graphs, we don't have adjacent. We have adjacent to and adjacent from. And of course, that has everything to do with the fact that this is directed. Because if you'll recall, all of the ordered pairs or all of the edges can be represented by ordered pairs. So this one would be A connects to A and then A connects to B. And that tells me that the direction goes from A to B. So I couldn't use B to A because there is no line from B to A. It's in the opposite direction. So you have to pay attention to the order. So picking on this guy right here, A, B, A would be adjacent to B. But B would be adjacent from A. So again, that just takes care of the fact that this is directed and we want to make sure that the direction is clear in the terminology or the language that we use. Same thing for initial vertex, terminal vertex, which might be called an end vertex. Terminal vertex of that ordered pair AB would be A, or I'm sorry, initial vertex would be A because it's the one that we started from, and terminal vertex for that specific ordered pair would be B. The in degree and out degree, so yes, there's still a degree for each one, but it's specific to how many arrows in and how many arrows out. So if I were looking at the in degree of B, that would be any arrows that go towards B. So this guy right here that we already talked about, and also E goes to B, and so there are two arrows in, but in terms of arrows out for B, there is only one, this guy right here. So there's a degree of two, in degree of two, out degree of two. The last is another little formula that might be able to help us solve some of those pesky problems we might get. And that tells us that the uh, sum of all of the in degrees is equal to the sum of all of the out degrees of the graph. And why does that make sense? Well, because for every line that you draw, obviously there's going to be one in and one out. So it makes perfect sense. And that is equal to the number of edges in our graph.